Yo, check it. This installment is, right now, is for a lot of the younger people who might be coming across these videos in the future and not understand the significance of why I feel as though I need to celebrate the release of this record. Um, I just want to go over the process of what it took to put a record out. I mean, nowadays, nowadays an artist actually can open his laptop up, even your iPad. You can open up GarageBand, make some beats, download samples, actually record it to the iPad, um, mix in the iPad, send the daggone song up to a company like TuneCore, that's T-U-N-E-C-O-R-E dot com, TuneCore. And then they'll have your record for I think $9.99 for a single. They'll have your record in all the internet stores, just like that. So it's record, freaking, um, you email the song, or upload the song, pay $9.99, and bam, you're in the internet store. Okay, back in the day, it wasn't that simple. And the reason why this combined the Buble is such a big deal, especially for me and a lot of the people that follow behind me making independent music and independent records, is because here was the process. You had to get the money to record yourself from the recording studio. And um, so first you go in the recording studio. Actually, to be smart about it, first you rehearse the song and make sure that you're efficient when you go in the studio because you're paying by the hour. So first you, you rehearse the song that you're going to do in the studio. Excuse me. Then once you get into the studio, you record the music. Then after you record the music, you, know, you lay down the various tracks that you have to lay down. Um, so you lay all your tracks in the studio. Then when you're done in the studio, after, after the track is mixed, so that's recording, then getting it mixed. Then after you get it mixed, then you have to go to a place, a mastering plant, where they basically take your music and they tweak it so, it's, so it sounds good on records. So after you get it mastered, then you have to design or find someone to design the actual label that goes onto the, onto the vinyl. Then after you get that, that design, then you go to a pressing plant. And that pressing plant makes something that's called a plate. And a steel plate is made. And these plates are used to smash hot wax together. And, um, wow, I saw it's starting to sound kind of sexy. But these plates, they kind of smash the hot wax together and squish it out to make the actual vinyl record. Now, after you get the vinyl record made, you know, you get as many as you're gonna get. I think the minimum was 300 at the time. You get 300 and up. So you get your 300, 500, 1,000 records, and then you take, then you have to take those records, physically take them to record stores and talk to record store owners about trying to sell your record, your product in those stores. And in most cases, if your record was, was just half decent, most of these stores would pick it up because they would, they would uh, get, like I said in a previous video, a lot of times if a record store is selling a famous person's record, like say for instance Michael Jackson, they might make 15 cents every time they sell a Michael Jackson record. Um, because the point of them is to have a bunch of records in the store that people come to buy and then maybe they'll buy a stereo or they'll buy something else. So they didn't make a lot of money on, on, on big name records. But an independent record, I come in with a record, I sell it to them for two dollars, they sell a the record for five bucks or, or four bucks and they make a whole two dollars off an independent record. So so back then it was a process in getting to get your record actually pressed. You guys today you have it a lot easier where you don't have to have um, actual vinyl to, to get music in place. And um, but the downside to that is um, I was just reading something the other day that if, say for instance, you're dealing with a company like CD Baby or something, and um, God forbid they don't go out of business, but say for instance, all your music collection that, you, that you've downloaded is through CD Baby, and CD Baby fails one day and shut down, goes bankrupt, kaput. Now, your iPod dies with all your music in it, your hard drive dies with all your music in it, all the music you bought from CD Baby you have to buy again because 
um, another company is not going to say, hey, you know, you were with CD Baby. Now you can, um, we'll let you download the same song. No, you have to download those songs again. So the importance of something, the importance of something like vinyl is that you got people today that have vinyl records that have lasted them 50 years, <laughs> you know, 30 years, you know, so vinyl is actually coming back into play. And like the other cool thing about vinyl is that a lot of people, like in my previous video, I showed where Public Enemy put my name inside of their jacket, like the, vi the vinyl is a cover. And then inside there's a piece of paper that the record goes in, a sleeve. And on that sleeve, people would have stuff written on it, stuff about the group, um, different little facts and stuff, thank yous, all that kind of stuff inside the record. And um, so, with vinyl, you can do that, and it's, and it's pretty readable. So there's people who actually really want to have that vinyl again. So they have that whole vinyl experience where you have the record, you turn the record over, you can read all the stuff about the artist. And those are people who are true, you know, true audiophiles who really want to have like a piece of something solid in their hand instead of an MP3 that they can lose if their computer crashes. So vinyl is becoming very important again. And um, so it's kind of... You know, I think it's kind of important to take this time to, to kind of give you guys a, a sense of what the process is um, and the process was for making that record. And it was important back then because not a lot of people were doing it. Not, not, not a lot of people were doing the same thing. Um, so you might want to um, get to a situation where you're like, look, I'm going to take my, my album and I'm going to put it on vinyl. So that you just, you just open up a new market for yourself. But, um, but that's why it was important. I did it at a time where there weren't a lot of people were, that were doing that. People were putting out records, but there weren't a lot of artists that started their own record companies with their own money and owned everything and did everything. Went to the store to sell the record, promoted the record, marketed the record. You know, I had my records on a moped because in a moped, it's not like a motorcycle where there's guts there. There's nothing there, so I would put my records on the moped and drive them down to the city and take them to different record stores, Sound of Market, Sound of Germantown, Sound of, Sound of Upper Darby, um, Funko Marts, um, all these different record stores I would take my records to. So it was a big deal back in 1985 for a young kid from the bottom to just say, hey, I'm gonna make my record on my own. And um, I knew it was a big deal when people kept telling me I couldn't do it, you know, so, one thing about your music is this, you have to understand is that there's a lot of talent in the world. If you turn on YouTube, there's somebody better than you. I mean, I don't care what it is that you do. You can find somebody that's better than you, than you at what you do. That's not the point. What you want to do is just do you and get up and every day hustle harder. Because a lot of times the people with a lot of talent don't really hustle that hard because they have that talent. And America is not really about who has the most talent. It's about who hustles the hardest. So get up every day and hustle. If you put your music on, if, if you're, and when I say hustle, you can't just put a song out. You have to go and perform that song in front of people, every opportunity and every chance you get. Make sure you got CDs in a backpack to sell. Dougie Fresh to this day does shows and he still sells CDs out of, a, out, you know, out, out the back of his car pretty much, so to speak. Um, for people because people are the most hype when they hear you perform and they see you perform some music and you go, yo, you can buy that right now. And plus, it shuts people up. Like the person go, oh, I would support you. And you go, bam, here's my CD. <laughs> support me now. You know what I mean? And you'll find out who your true fans are and who they aren't. So, you know, you don't want to just be going out there busing, doing shows and all this stuff and you don't have anything to sell. Um, that's not the business. It's, it is, the, you know, it is the music business. It's the, it's the business of selling music, and um, so you want to have something to put in people's hands. So, and it doesn't cost you a lot of money these days to actually make CDs. You can make CDs in your own crib with a laptop. So, don't let nobody tell you you can't. You know, and um, you just get up there and you hustle hard enough and, and long enough. Uh, and um, something's got to break. It's just it's just the, the law of freaking nature. It's physics. <laughs> you chop away at something long enough, man, and, um, and, and something breaks. Um, 
but it's very important for you to get in front of people and and um, be able to take honest criticism about your music too I mean you know you want to get in front of people and you want to rock in front of those people and if you're not rocking them then do something else you know do something different try something different keep trying new things that was the benefit of, of um, how I came up is that we went to part house parties every weekend so I got the chance to try new stuff every week and um, so you got to get in front of people, make music that moves people. And if it moves people, it will it will eventually rise to the top. If it doesn't move people, try something else, you know. So, peace, don't stop. This combobulator, boobulator, 30 years, MC Breeze from the bottom, 55th Environment Project, North Philly. I lived everywhere. Left in Somerset. <laughs> Knife and Darien, was it Darien in, in 100 Park? Anyway, I'm out, I'm tired. <laughs>